when Caesar comes to live with Will, he, um, at first it's almost like um, a uh, uh, Kramer versus Kramer kind of situation where a young man is forced into a parental role, not knowing anything about being a parent. But in addition to that, because Caesar is so smart, Will also looks to him, uh, is, is examining him as a, you know, an example of the, the drug in action. And um, so he's both raising Caesar as a son and as um, a, a positive example of, of the drug effect, of drug's effects. As the movie progresses, I think the father-son kind of relationship takes over and, and, and Will becomes even more humane and less of a scientist and um, starts to care about Caesar more than um, the success of his, of his drug. Andy Serkis has created this new kind of performance in a way. And, and he fell into it. I mean, he was cast as Gollum just for his voice. And then I guess Peter Jackson realized what a great performance, physical performance he was giving and that he should try and capture that in some way. So Andy kind of fell into this performance capture tech world and um, has really pioneered it. And so Rupert wanted him immediately. While we're acting, he is not in an ape suit, he's in, you know, these gray pajama looking things with sensors all over his body and he has dots on his face that will help the effects team read his expressions in the computer. So that everything that Andy's doing is captured. <clears throat> um, so you would think that acting opposite somebody like that and trying to think that they were a chimpanzee would be very difficult, but um, from the first scene that we had together on, you know, it's been actually, it's been easy because Andy is so, you know, good at the behavior and he's so connected to all, what he's doing and, you know, the other actors that he allows my imagination to take over and I really can treat him as if he were a chimpanzee.